Many of those who bandy about the word anti-Semite aren't doing so because they care about actual anti-Semitism or racism. They're using it as a weapon to attack those who are critical of Israel. They're trying to boil down Judaism to be equivalent to the state of Israel that is in itself an anti-Semitic construct. They are doing it in such a way that effectively renders the term anti-Semitic meaningless. The world is mourning Bishop Tutu, who just died the other day. Can I remind the world, the man was a rampant anti-Semite and bigot. The fact that Dershowitz used the slur of anti-Semitism to attempt to demean the reputation and legacy of this remarkable human being, very sadly says more about Dershowitz and more about the way in which anti-Semitism has been weaponized and equated with any criticism of Israel and its brutal and illegal occupation of the Palestinian territories. It is the same slur of anti-Semitism that was used against Jeremy Corbyn in the United Kingdom, that was used against Bernie Sanders in the United States, and that is still being used, supposedly in the name of fighting anti-Semitism. So in today's Labour Party, for instance, a Jewish member of the Labour Party is five times more likely to be investigated, suspended, or expelled by the Labour Party for anti-Semitism than anyone else in the party. Think for a moment of the absurdity of expelling anti-racist Jews to thwart anti-Semitism. It is into that complete madness that Dershowitz's comments about Desmond Tutu should be located. Desmond Tutu campaigned against apartheid in South Africa, and he campaigned against human rights abuses everywhere in the world, including in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. When he visited Israel, he was shocked and remarked that he felt that apartheid in Israel was, if anything, worse than it had been in South Africa. You said that what you saw in Israel something that was quite akin to the situation in South Africa. Well, in many instances, worse. He was also deeply frustrated by the fact that the Israeli state supported the apartheid South African regime and helped it become a nuclear power. And he would often say, both privately and publicly, that he never understood how a state such as Israel could cooperate with and arm the apartheid state in South Africa that was run by Nazi sympathizers, where a lot of the apartheid legislation was mimicked from the Nazi legislation between 1933 and 1938. Tutu would often speak about the need to liberate not just those oppressed, but the oppressor as well. He saw how white South Africans became bitter and hateful people as a consequence of the racism that dominated their daily lives. The dehumanizing of the other that is such a central component of any system of oppression. But we will kill you in this, in this village, we will, we, will you. we will kill those people here in this village land. We are for your people. And when he visited Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, he saw the same thing amongst many Israelis. A hatred of the other who they had dehumanized. A shrinking of their own existence because they defined that existence in relation to those they subjugated and oppressed. Part of my own concern for what is happening there is in fact not what is happening to the Palestinians, but it is what the Israelis are doing to themselves. I mean, when you go to those checkpoints and you see these young soldiers behaving abominably badly, they are not aware that when you carry out dehumanizing policies, whether you like it or not, those policies dehumanize the perpetrator. Tutu felt very strongly, and 
we discussed this on a number of occasions, that the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign was absolutely critical in bringing about an end to apartheid in South Africa because what it did was it started to undermine and corrode the comfortable life that white South Africans lived at the expense of the majority of people in South Africa. Desmond Tutu campaigned indefatigably against press censorship, freedom of speech, freedom of the media. It is something that on certain uncomfortable topics today, like Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, more and more our media are self-censoring, our political parties are censoring their members, what they can and cannot say and believe on these topics. Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party, eulogized Desmond Tutu, despite the fact that the former leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, who was a tireless campaigner against apartheid South Africa at a time when it was not fashionable to be so, remains suspended from Keir Starmer's Labour Party, along with countless other anti-racists who echo the words of Desmond Tutu on Israel, on the Palestinian territories, on injustice and on true anti-racism. This was craven hypocrisy from Keir Starmer. The Labour Party's shadow foreign secretary, David Lamy, was also full of praise for Archbishop Desmond Tutu. In virtually the same moment at which he apologised for having nominated Jeremy Corbyn for the leadership of the Labour Party. It is worth bearing in mind that David Lamy never thought it necessary to apologize for voting for the invasion of Iraq that has led to over a million deaths. But he did feel it necessary to apologize having nominated the only Labour leader who has apologized for the invasion of Iraq. Desmond Tutu refused to share a platform with Tony Blair because he believed that Tony Blair should be on trial for war crimes at the International Criminal Court. I know which Desmond Tutu would apologize for. Those who want to wage war against Iraq must know it would be an immoral war. It is my belief that the most important thing we can do is to learn from our history rather than repeat it. It is incredibly hypocritical of our political leaders to praise a person who fought and overcame apartheid in the past, while at exactly the same time they are stifling and trying to prevent us from halting apartheid today. The reality that Desmond Tutu would be suspended or expelled by the current Labour Party for his support of BDS against Israel is a reflection on the current morality of Keir Starmer's Labour Party. This is the same Labour Party whose leadership is currently being advised by Lord Peter Mandelson, a friend of Jeffrey Epstein, who appears on 10 occasions in Ghislaine Maxwell's Little Black Book. Someone who phoned Jeffrey Epstein when he was in jail on child abuse convictions. What does it say about our politics, our public life, and crucially, our media? that Jeremy Corbyn was criticized more for the way in which he pronounced Jeffrey Epstein's name than scrutiny is being given to the fact that Keir Starmer's leadership is being advised by one of Jeff Epstein's mates. What does that say about the morality of a party that today is suspending and expelling people who share the vision and the specific political views of Archbishop Desmond Tutu? That is not the legacy of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Tutu's legacy is that we have the principles, the courage, and the convictions to stand up against all racism, to stand up against human rights abuses wherever they occur and whoever they are perpetrated by. What Desmond Tutu taught us is that we must always listen to each other. We must always hear each other, regardless of how uncomfortable it is. In our world of social media, we don't listen, we don't hear, we abuse by instinct without thought. Desmond Tutu taught us the importance of free speech. There has never been a more important time for independent media. Double Down News is more crucial 
than ever before at this moment in our political history. Join Double Down News on Patreon.